Hi, my name is Amanda Miller and I'm the Director of Bands at Port Charlotte Middle School in Southwest Florida. And this is another bell cover uh, video. Um, this is what I came up with. There's been some similar, some completely different. This is just my take on it. Um, really quickly to give an overview to see if you're interested in watching the rest of the tutorial. This is the doubled over uh, 80 denier that was mentioned in the Colorado study. I chose to um, sew cotton on it so that this can take more of the wear and tear because this stuff is pretty expensive and um, this it just isn't. Um, I went with a drawstring pouch idea so that it's pretty easy for our students to take them on and off. Um, off is pretty easy, just pull it. It's got lots of room to come right over the belt for washing and changing, and then going on is also pretty stinking easy. I'm gonna have to do this over my shoulder because I can't, you can't see my lap, but real simple. <clears throat> And I found of the ones that I've, I've, I've gone through a couple prototypes and this seems most the least expensive one because I'm using this as opposed to a lot of the pantyhose and it still is covering, you can see it's still covering the entire belt. So if you're interested, um, I'm gonna do a quick tutorial and show you how to do this. It does require a sewing machine, um, but it's very easy sewing. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully I will have a Google Doc set up soon with all the measurements for all the instruments, including oboe and clarinet, if you wanna do a bell cover on those. Um, I haven't experimented with the bags yet, uh, but, but yeah, so hopefully this helps you out. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email will be in the description or wherever the Google Doc is. Thanks. Hi, before I get into the tutorial for the band directors watching, I wanted to give you a quick uh, sound clip of the two. Um, I'm a trombone player, so please don't judge my bad trumpet tone. But this is it with, um, there is a little bit of kickback, there is a mute to it, but I think it's less than the resistance you get from a straight mute, honestly. <laughs> huge difference but there is an adjustment in the tone um, I've played with all cotton I've played with different variations and this cotton nylon mix seems to have the least effect on the tone and for me it seems to go more in line with what the Colorado said is safe ish for now so that's that's what I ran with here's the pantyhose I cut two sections out in six inches so I can use these for the next one um, I've already cut them open so we're gonna do this and this and then we're just gonna put them on top of each other and that gives us the double layer that Colorado suggests then I'm gonna take my template and that's gonna give me a, just enough clearance here and here um, you, you can put another half inch there if you want um, but I'm pretty good with a sewing machine that I can get pretty close. From here, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna reinforce these two layers by going all the way around the uh, circumference of the template. Um, these are uh, quilting binding clips. If you don't have those, um, you can use anything that'll clip or you can just pin or you can hold it and hope you stay on track. I just, um, I'm personally a sewer and a quilter, so I have lots of little doodads to help me make um, this process a lot easier. Quick little back stitch and we're good. So you can see, I, one thing I do like about the white is I can see where I am versus the black. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take some fabric shears and I'm just gonna go and kind of trim this up. Um, I'm gonna do eyeball probably about a quarter inch. If you're not um, good at sewing really tight, give yourself more space. But this is just to cut the bulk out from around here. There we have it. It's not beautiful, but it's definitely gonna okay. work. Next is the part that's going to attach here and come up around the bell just a little bit, enough to um, attach the drawstring. Um, for the trumpet, I have measured 18 inches long, so you have um, an overlap for your seam allowance and enough wiggle room to get it on and off of the trumpet. And then um, my tunnel for my drawstring, because the paracord I'm using 
is number 95 and it's pretty thin just because it's cheap and it's pretty dang durable so I don't need a really big tunnel for that to go through so I'm just doing a, um, a half inch like that and that's built into the width that I have here okay, so what I'm going to do next is um, is prep this for the drawstring because one thing I really don't like is when everything's said and done having to go in and try to you know get that drawstring all the way through some people use a puller some people use a safety pin I, I just do it here so what I just did is I finger pressed up a half inch and what I'm gonna do is in this part here a couple a little bit in because remember this is gonna be overlap is I'm gonna sew a buttonhole right in here thankfully my machine is super awesome and does this automatically so I'm just gonna step down my foot and it's gonna sew it on its own. I have no clue how to do this without the automatic function on a machine. Um, so if you need anything, check YouTube, or again, just cut a hole in it. Um, but again, this is, I, I like the reinforcing. See, done. Here we are on the other side. Notice I'm pretty close to this edge because only about a half inch of that is gonna be um, overlapped with the other side. I'm gonna move this down just a touch and put in the second hole um, so that when it comes together, those two are pretty close. Here we are. If you've never done a buttonhole, you just take a little seam ripper, go in here and gently open up those threads. and that'll be the in and out for the drawstring. See on this side I have my buttonhole, which I opened up with a seam ripper, and over here I have the other one. So what I do is I feed this guy through here, because I have dubbed this the outside, and I pull it a little past there. I'm gonna kind of pull it through this side. And since I gave myself a little bit of extra, um, I can pull it nice and flat, and I have plenty of room here and plenty of room here, but just to make my life a little easier, I'm going to clip this guy here so it doesn't move on me. Boop. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this directly into the tunnel. So I'm gonna fold that over my half inch and sew along this salvage edge and then I've already got my drawstring in, locked, and so, um, I have my presser foot set on this folded edge, and I've got my needle just, just shy of that salvage. This guy's here, I took that clip off, um, but I'm just gonna feed it through. I've got a pretty big stitch here, I think I'm at a three. Um, you know, you could zigzag stitch this if you really wanted to, but I think this will hold. So what I'm doing is just, as I get here, I'm just pushing that cord out of the way so I don't sew it in place, because that would, that would be bad. And if you really wanted to clip this whole thing, you could, but you know, I've been on this sewing machine enough, I can eyeball it. Um, I just think that this little thing step makes it so much easier in the end, not having to uh, feed that cord through. Gosh, I just hate doing that. If you wanted to make the tunnel bigger for yourself, go for it. Just add it to your overall dimensions. Oops, this guy's trying to move on me. Hopefully he doesn't. Here we go. Mind all my strings, but you can see this pulls that way and the other way. So we are already have the drawstring already. All we have to do is when we put it together, put the little uh, cord stop on there. So the next step is sewing this puppy onto here. All right, so when you're gonna go sew these two pieces together, make sure you're sewing right sides together. So this is the outside of your drawstring. You wanna put that down because you're gonna flip this inside out. And there may be a fancier way to do this, but I am honestly just gonna line this puppy up with the edge, set my needle not all the way in, but more towards the left. Um, I've got a really small stitch here. I think I'm at a 2.5 because this is gonna what's going to be tugging. And just get a couple stitches in. And move her around and just make your way around the circle. You can see I clipped my drawstring just in case it wants to move on me. One less thing I need to worry about. Just don't sew over it. I almost just did. I just keep going around like this. So a couple, 
adjust. And coming up towards the end. So this was my first. I'm gonna pull that back and fold it right on the stitch line there. Get that out of the way. And I'm gonna sew this guy all the way up to it. Maybe a little bit finicky here, but nothing you can't handle. Get you all the way there. And the back stitch. I pulled her off of the presser foot. And I'm just going to take it, I haven't inverted it yet, and I'm just going to match those two sides up like that. And I'm down, you can see I gave myself just enough room. And I'm going to sew right down the side here. And your drawstring is not going to go through the top of that part, so you can sew right from the edge. This is kind of the part that's back, that's behind where that'll be. And just give it a little tug, make sure you've got it. And then now we get to invert it. Boop, 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 boop. And get rid of all these unsightly stringies. Okay. So our last step is now, if you want to use one of these cord stops, you're more than welcome to. I do just because they're so freaking cheap and I, I just like them. Um, if you didn't want to, you could just tie a knot and just have the kids cinch this way. Um, but I'm going to put the couple extra cents into these. Um, these I got at the store. They were 25, 25 cents a piece, but I know online I can get them way cheaper. So just feed it through. Of course, it's going to be easier said than done because there's a camera on me. Feed them through. Um, I pull it. I'm going to put a knot on the end. Um, I may burn them. If, if you use paracord, you can burn the ends so they don't fray. Um, I may do that. I just haven't done it yet. Let's tie a knot. Again, camera on me, and I can't tie a simple knot. Pull it tight, and you're done. That's, that's the bell cover. So you've got your nylon that was suggested in a nice, easy um, cloth cover. Here we have it on the trumpet. I've cinched it up as much as I can. This little blip is um, my buttonholes were actually a little too far apart, so I will fix that in the written directions. But there she is, nice and snug. You've got the, um, the nylon where it counts. And I think this just adds more durability and um, gives the, where the tension's gonna be. I, I don't know how well the nylon would be up here with that repeated tension. So I will be doing this with black thread because that looks ugly. <laughs> and I cut off my stringies, but um, I hope this helped. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, you know, uh, email me, but it's pretty simple. Uh, there may be a better way to do it, and by all means, if there is, let me know. But that's uh, what I've got for now, and that's why I'm gonna start mass producing on my own. Have a great year, everybody, and let's get these kids making some music.